What is up, everybody? Janelle here with my UFC Fight Night 13 on Fox recap video. It was a great event, the biggest event they've ever had on Fox. But before I get into it, I want to talk about the night before Friday, history in the making. We saw the crowning of the new, of the first UFC's strawweight women's champion. It was between Carla Esparza and Rose, Thug Rose, Nama Yunus. This ended in the third round. They were going at it. Of course, Rose was trying to end it early. She's so dynamic, so creative in her striking. She was going after it. Carla is super tough. She's durable. She's a wrestler first, but her striking is coming along quite nicely. She was able to hang in there with Rose. She weathered the storm, started working her takedown, and eventually she was taking her down at will. Okay, like I said, this ended in the third round. She was able to take her down, ground and pound. Eventually, she got the back, got a choke, ended up submitting her, and we have the first women's strawweight champion. Great, uh, 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 fight for her. She was the number one seed going in and won all the way through. So good job for her. Congratulations, Carla Esparza. And uh, she already pretty much has her next fight because the next night, gonna get into UFC on Fox now, we saw her potential next opponent. Now I went four out of five. So I'm back y'all. First up, I called on the prelim. I, this was the one that I missed. I called it for Claudia Gadila against Joanna Jenkinczek. And I was wrong. <laughs> this was a very close fight. It was a split decision uh, victory in favor of Joanna. I, I agree, Joanna. I agree. It could have went either way, though. I kind of feel like Claudia won, but again, I do. Uh, I'm okay with the decision. It was very, very close. First round, uh, Joanna won this first round. I think she eked it out. Her totally outboxed her. Claudia tried to take her down, but she was basically stuffing all the takedown attempts and outboxing her. And then eventually she landed with an uppercut that knocked her on her butt and almost finished her. Claudia was saved by the bell. Fast forward to the next round. The second round, this round was all Claudia. She totally uh, was able to stifle her offense, push her up against the, gate, uh, against the cage, keep her from hitting her. <laughs> Took her down a few times, tried to get some ground and pound, but couldn't mount too much of an offense, but she was able to control that round. So now we're 1-1. Third round comes up, again, very close. I thought Cal Claudia, again, was working her game. Uh, Joanna was able to break free towards the end of the round and start landing her punches, but again, split the decision uh, victory in favor of Joanna. And in the post-press conference, Dana White pretty much already said that Joanna's probably going to be seeing Carla next. That's going to be a great fight if that happens. If not, who do you want to see Joanna fight next? Next up, I got this pick. I picked Matt Mitrion to beat Gabriel Gonzaga. He did in the first round. They felt each other out for a little bit. They were both swinging for the fences. You kind of knew somebody was going to get knocked the huh out. And then as Gabriel was coming in, Matt uh, landed a short shot, very short shot on the inside, which uh, connected with the jaw. Knocked him on his butt, got on top, ground and pound. Looked like Herb Dean stopped it, but not quite yet. But Matt kind of backed up a little bit. Then he came in with one more shot that really uh, clocked him. Ref stopped it. Good stoppage. Good win for Matt Mitrione. He was ranked number 14, I believe. So he's probably going to climb up in rankings after this. Who would you like to see Matt Mitrione fight next? Next up, got this pick too. And I said that if Alistar Overeem lost, this would be the last time that I picked him. It will not be the last time that I choose Alistar Overeem. He beat Stefan Struve in the first round. Okay, they were going back and forth. Looked like Alistar was having a problem getting inside those long arms of Stefan, trying to get to him. Didn't really want to uh, um, fight standing up. So he went for a takedown. It was a beautiful takedown. He kind of drug him down, twisted in the air, landed on top in his guard. And uh, Stefan is very good on the ground. Uh, off of his back, he had his knees in Alistar's chest, which made it hard for Alistar to get to him. But he was still clocking him with some heavy shots. Eventually... The shots got through. He had him up against the cage, and his head pinned, pinned on the uh, against the the uh, mat and the cage, clocking him. Nothing but face. Uh, referee stopped in. Good stoppage. Good win for him in the first round. Who would you like to see Alistar fight next? Now, co-main event. I thought this was going to be super close. I got this pick as well. However, it was not close at all. I called her for Rafael dos Anjos against Nate Diaz, and not only did he win, he whooped Nate's ass <laughs> for three rounds, tore him up. I pretty much called this pretty well. I said that um, Nate was susceptible to leg kicks and that he puts lead, he's kind of flat footed, stands in front of you. If you kick that leg, you can take away a lot of his mobility very early. And that's exactly what Rafael did. You could see the results of that in the first round. By the end of the first round, Nate was 
uh, lifting that leg up, not putting much weight on it. There was already bruising. He had already done the damage. He was, he was taking him down, ground and pound, holding him, controlling him on top. He busted Nate up, cuts here, <sighs> dominating. He dominated all three rounds. He didn't finish him. Went to a decision. It got to the point where Nate wasn't even putting any weight on that lead leg, switching stance. He tried to throw a kick with it. Nothing. He got dominated. Uh, Dana White in the post-press conference said because Nomegomedov is pretty much hurt and he would have been next in line for Anthony Pettis, but since he's hurt, he pretty much said that Rafael has the next title shot. But if somehow that doesn't happen, let me know who you would like to see Rafael fight next. Real quick, I want to talk about Nate Diaz. As you know, we haven't seen him fight in a year, which is rare for him. He likes to fight pretty regularly. And he came in four pounds, four and a half pounds overweight. He came in at 160, which is rare for him. If you saw him, he was a little flabbier than he were used to. All during, he's in contract negotiations. Um, he wants more money. All during the week, he didn't do interviews. There was one interview he showed up for and then left. So what is going on with Nate Diaz? If you want more money, would you stop shooting yourself in the foot? You lose 20% of your purse automatically when you don't make weight and you're not eligible for any fight bonuses, which he has many. What's going on? Is there any personal problems going on there? Someone let me know. Is there any information I don't know going on with the Diaz brothers or Nate Diaz? Now, main event. And I picked this one for uh, Junior Dos Santos, and I said it was easier than my other decisions. However, this was a super close fight. I got this pick. He did beat Stipe Miocic. It went all five rounds. It was super close. Heavy hitting. They were throwing bombs the whole five Rounds. Let's get into it. The first two rounds went to Stepe. He totally controlled the pace, walking him down, holding him up against the fence. Junior was frustrating me because he kept his hands down, especially going out of the transitions. Stepe was clocking him, getting in and out of the transitions from the dirty boxing up against the fence, trying to take him down. Stepe kept clocking him in transition because he kept his hands down. I'm like, Junior, stop! I hate when fighters do that. Busting him up, landing rights, controlling the pace, combinations. He busted Junior up in those first two rounds. Both lips swollen, eyes swollen, blood. Cut him up. <laughs> he was winning this fight, first two rounds. Third round comes. Ooh, how one shot can turn the tide. Going at it. And you could see in this third round that Stipe slowed down tremendously. You know, this is his first time. He's been in five round fights before, but he's never actually gone all five rounds. This was the first time. I said that Junior's experience would probably carry him through. Plus, against the, the he had a higher level of opposition than Stipe. I think it was the experience that carried him through. Junior got his second win. Stipe did not. <laughs> Eventually, halfway through the third round, Steep, or, uh, Junior landed a right or a left that knocked Stipe on his ass, almost KO'd him. He was able to get up, though. He was able to weather the storm. He was able to run away. There was hands to his side, mouth open, turning his back to Junior. He was almost finished. He weathers the storm, lands a couple of shots himself, comes back at Junior. I'm telling you, these two men were going at it, but Junior took this third round. Fourth round comes. Junior has more left than Stipe. He's outboxing him. He had been working those body shots the whole fight. I think they actually started to show, show here. Stipe was visibly tired, like I said, holding his mouth open, hands down. And Junior just outworked him. More activity, landing harder shots. And he did, he did this in the fourth, and it was, he did it even more in the fifth. Went to a decision. All three judges gave it to Junior Dos Santos. Crowd kind of booed a little bit. I agree with the decision. Junior won the last three rounds. In that one shot where he knocked him down, he opened up Stipe's face almost as much as Stipe had opened him up in two rounds. Great fight for both of them. This is a great fight for Stipe. He's probably going to climb in ranks, or actually he's ranked number four, so he really can't go too far. But his stock definitely rose with this loss, and they're probably going to fight again. I don't think he's going to get a title shot off of this, because again, this was a closer fight than I think most people thought. Uh, the Verdum Cain Velasquez fights in June, that's plenty of time. I think JDS is probably going to have to fight again before he gets a clear number one shot. Let me know who you think JDS should fight next, and Steve Bay. Let me know your thoughts on this event, any injury updates. Talk to me. Take care. Let me know about Carla's win as well. Talk to me. Take care. And goodbye.